Hello YouTube and welcome to this very different Unity to Unity not tutorial um, showcase um, and this is where I'm just gonna show things here which I thought would be really helpful for some people but won't fit into the tutorial series so this first one will be motion capture test and basically if you don't know what motion capture is is most game companies use it it's very expensive and um, you put a suit with loads of sensors on someone and as they move they record animation to the computer so the there's a documentary on YouTube if you type in motion capture for Assassin's Creed 2 and you have this guy, he's got the suit on and as he mimics stabbing people in with a plastic sword um, the character will do it and then that's how they get the animation in the game um, so this is really simple, I've not done it exactly like that basically um, you move this blue cube click stop and the red cube will follow it and can play what exactly what you've done and you can just keep going forever till your computer lags so to do it you actually have to split your screen in two like this because you I haven't set up the dragging features on the two cubes yet but we have four buttons save stop play and clear save you click your cube and click save then you start moving it that's how you record you click stop to stop recording play and the red cube will follow it and then click clear to restart and keep playing so if I've clicked my blue cube and click save you wait for a bit and it says started, that's when to do it. So if I were to move it around here, do a little bouncing sequence, move it under the floor, back up, do a figure eight. So as you can see, I'm clearly doing a figure eight. L square, I'll draw a square, draw a circle, and drop it here. So click start and it says finished. So we dragged it out of the way so it don't hit it. And we click play and then the red cube will do everything I've just done. So see it starts there moves up, starts doing the figure 8, starts doing the bouncing sequence, goes under the floor, and does the figure 8 again, and then does the square, then does the circle, then it collides with it, and then it stops. That's it. So that's so. If we wanted to play again, so we click clear. Now we click save again. Start again. Da 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 da. da. Click start. Oh, click play. We'll click play now. There we go. So it'll repeat everything I've just done. That's it. So it's actually pretty simply coded. Um, the script's in the description for you to download if anyone wants to download it. But if I open it up, um, it's pretty simple. All I've done is I've got two booleans which um, chain are equal true if it's recording or if it's playing it. Then I've got something called a JavaScript array, which basically allows you to add array add slots to the array. Um, unlike normal arrays where you put the square brackets, you can't do it on this on those ones, you can't add to it. So these ones that I've made at zero, and then every time records equals true, um, the time, so we'll go here, if record equals true, the timer will tick down. So the timer is set at 50 at the moment, because it's a good record speed. So if the timer is less than one, because that gives you your time to click, click from the game view to the script view, click the cube, and then it'll print started to show it started recording. Then every, millisecond in unity it'll add a position at the x and y of the coordinates here so the x coordinates will be say 2 the y will be 5 so it'll be up in corner then you move it and it'll record it and it'll keep adding it to these arrays and um, these arrays you can't actually see in the um, what you call it inspector but they they do add to it and you can get over 300 to it or something you can just keep going and then every time it increases, it increases the save number. So that says how much, um, how many things you've saved. So it will keep increasing. The timer will equal back to two. So every two slots, it'll record a bit like one, two, record, one, two, record. So it keeps updating position. So if you were to move really crazy, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see it, but you can change that. Um, the, if play is true, however, so we've clicked it. And um, we'll just go down here. So if click saves true, records true, which is true. If stops click, record equals false, and so does play. The save numbers reset and the print set finished, so it tells you finished. So we'll go back up here. If we do actually click play button here, it makes play true, and then it prints how long the x coordinates are. And um, if you don't know what I mean, so if we click our blue cube and click save, 
move it on the x-axis or the y-axis and click start. If we could play down here, it'll print how many arrays it's saved. So we've done 59 frames there. We'll call it frames, it's easier. And we could just keep going. I've had it over a thousand and it just played it all perfectly. Um, so what the clear button does is makes them both false, puts the frames per second back here, which you'll see in a minute, back to three. So three frames per second, resets the save number. And then the X coordinates dot clear is for JavaScript arrays. What it does is clear it back to its default, which is zero. So completely empties it and it prints clear to say you've cleared it. So we've just clicked play and now what it does, if play is true, then the frames per second, if you don't know what frames per second is, it's basically how many frames you want to play each second. So I've set it to three, so three, three, three frames per second. Um, most You can use 12, but it'll go a bit fast. I tried to do it with 24, which is what they mostly use in movies, and that messed up. That just was too fast. So um, that ticks down from 3, and if it is less than 1, it moves the object, the replay object transform, which is the red object, that one, and move the X and Y positions to the saved number, which is 0 at default. So the array of 0 moves it to that. The save number is increased by 1, so it now 1 equals 3, ticks down again, um, then it does it again, a bit for number 1. So it just keeps repeating itself. And then if it hits the length of it, so it's finished, then play equals false. That's it. It may sound confusing, but if you look at it, it's actually really, really simple. So one more last test to show you. So click a blue cube, click save. Do a little bouncing sequence, click stop, play, as you can see, it follows you. Um, I don't know if you can see why I couldn't fit this into any game, but I just couldn't find the right thing for it. But I was thinking maybe um, if we stuck a cube to each foot of a character, and say we have a character's foot here and one on the other side, um, this can be adapted to support the Z axis as well, so you can have it in 3D. All you do is put that to Z. Add a Z there, just wherever your Y is, just add a Z to it. It's pretty simple. But then you click Z, save. So you want the character to walk. So foot, click, 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 kick, click, click. Click start. And if we move that out like the red one, um, we can save that in-game animation and somehow find a way to export it to XML. So you can save that animation as a script. And then we assign that to each character, click play, character waits, and he walks. Click, 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 click. So the character's beginning to walk, kick him. As you can see, if we assign each one of them to a point, or set like eight to a point, have them all running at once when this character moves about, we've basically conquered motion capture or animation. So that's really simple. Um, Post in the comments down below what you used, what would you would use it for, um, because I'm actually out of ideas after that. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, that'll be in the description below, and see you later.